Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be doing this door from start to finish. I've already prepped it. I'm getting ready to do my final squeegee. I'm not going to be using a true spray because I just uh, sold my true spray to a local tinter here. So we're in the process of replacing our true spray system. So today I got to go back to the old way of using a hand spray bottle, unfortunately. Here I'm going to do my final squeegee. I've already prepped this door with my secret recipe. And this is going to be a hybrid template. So we use the template from the core cutting software and then we modified it for my liking, which means that in most places I add it two inches. Only in the cutouts did I not add anything. So this cutout, I didn't add anything and the cutout around the mirror, I didn't add anything. So this is going to be my final spray. I spent about 10 minutes prepping the door. And then in this bottle, I've got 3M's gel that we get from fellers.com. And I have yellow, yellow tools ape solution that we get at 44tools.com. I'm gonna take my time. As, as much as I wanna get over there and grab my piece, I want this to be wet. Okay, unfortunately I don't have my true spray today. I've got this upside down on the peel board and I've already wet underneath most of this. That's why it's falling right off. The backing paper sticks a little bit more with the matte film than it does the gloss film. Can't tell you why, it's just the way it is. Okay, the reason why we put our templates upside down is so that when we're ready to take them off the peel board, we can pick them up from the bottom like so, and it falls into place. Now here I'm gonna walk backwards, try to eliminate catching as much dust as possible. And just take my time to get this in the rough spot. And I say rough spot because I don't have to line a bunch of things up because I added film around the perimeter. When I take this out of my back pocket, I spray it a few times because I'm always imagining a little piece of lint getting caught right there. Don't know if it's ever actually happened, but it's just a habit. And that's true with any sprayer. Like when I pick up my true spray nozzle from wherever it's been, whether it's been on the trash can or God forbid it's been on the floor or on my pocket, I give it a little spray thinking that I'm blowing off a little piece of lint from my pocket. Okay. So right here, I'm totally focused on this corner right at the tip of this black piece. Now that I got that where I want it, I can tack that down. And there's a little recessed area right here. So that's why I want to hit this recessed area before hitting anything else. Okay. This is basically the only other thing I need to line up. Oh. Just like so. For those of you that have worked with Matt, you know it's a little bit more forgiving than the gloss films. 
hides contaminants just a little bit more. Hides work marks just a little bit more. And your tool always slides really nice on matte film. So I'm a big fan of working with matte. I think most installers are. So whenever we have a customer come in that is interested in getting their full car done, I mean, I genuinely think that it's a great idea to go matte because if you're gonna spend all that money to do your whole car and get no restyle, it's something to consider. And that's exactly why we're doing our personal car in matte, so we have it to show customers. But also, I wanna be able to show customers what a paint protection job actually looks like and not have to have them wonder. I'm gonna really point out, once this car is done, the different individual flaws that it has because we don't wanna lead customers to think that it, there is such thing as perfection. There's no such thing as perfection, but there most definitely is such thing as being proud of it. So one of my core values is being proud of everything I do. Whether it's mowing my lawn or doing PPF on a customer's car. I have to be proud of it for me to be able to sleep at night, but I cannot expect for it to be perfect because there is literally no such thing. Okay. One thing I always talk about is squeegeeing the water off of the top of the film. You want to squeegee the water off the top of the film and pretend as if you only have so many squeegee strokes per panel because what you don't want to do is start scribbling. What do I mean by scribbling? Like, oh, I got to get that, oh, that, 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 and not taking nice, clean, overlapping, large squeegee strokes. If you start what I call scribbling, you end up getting a lot of water trapped in the film by the time you're done. So much of PPF is about being effective with the squeegee. Everyone knows how to squeegee the film, but there's levels to it. Just like when it comes to pounding a nail in with a hammer. You know, we can all do it. We can all get the job done. Most of us will have nails that go sideways, which is equivalent to leaving moisture behind. A professional framer that pounds nails with a hammer every day can hit a nail more effectively than we can. And that's true with a PPF squeegee. I can use a PPF squeegee more effectively than most people that are just getting started. And what do I mean by that? I mean not leaving water behind, holding your squeegee up nice and right, overlapping 50%, working in a uniform fashion, using proper pressure. So notice how dry the top is. It's not 100% dry, but it's, it, it's really dry. Here, I see a little bit moisture pocket. And the only reason I was able to see that moisture pocket is because of how dry it is. If there's tons of water on top of this, as I work this lower area and I'm looking up, I can't really inspect it. That's why it's so important to Squeegee the water out from underneath the film, which we all know that's PPF, but I'm not focused on just the water underneath the film. I'm just as focused as the water on top of the film so that I can always be looking for water that I missed. With PPF, if you're just getting started, 99% of the time we're pulling the squeegee. What do I mean? My hand is in front of the squeegee when I pull the squeegee. My hand is behind the squeegee when I push it. So it has nothing to do with where my body's at. It has to do with the angle of the squeegee. This would be a pull. This would be a push because I'm behind the squeegee pushing it. Okay? So with PPF, 99% of the time we're pulling the squeegee. Whereas with window tinting, 99% of the time we're pushing the squeegee. Why? Because the substrates are different and PPF wants to bunch up, grab the squeegee when you're pushing it. So I'll push the squeegee for little detailed areas when, when it doesn't make sense to pull it. 
for instance, right up against this little plastic piece, I might push the squeegee a little bit, but most of the time you're pulling the squeegee. So keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna come down to the floor and that, you know what, coming down to the floor, in this case, I'm using the race ramps, but it, it brings up an interesting point. Just like when playing sports, the people that are willing to be more physical are gonna be better players. So what do I mean by physical? I, I'm not staying up on my chair trying to make this work because I don't wanna be physical and get on the ground. I take the time to get all the way down. If I need to, I'll lay all the way down. In this case with the race ramps, I don't need to lay all the way down. I'm comfortable right here. But if I see someone trying, so, so many people will put more effort into avoiding the work than just doing the work. Just get down and get physical. Okay, so as I work my way down, I'm gonna add a little bit of slip. Again, I'm always looking up at the work I've already completed to make sure that I haven't missed anything. Because if you notice it, too long after doing it, the water can be trapped and then you gotta peel the film up and then you get a work line and it's kind of the beginning of the end. Okay, I'm gonna go over the bottom again. Really focusing on this sharp body line because most water is gonna get caught on the body line. Holding that squeegee really upright, using two hands, using a lot of effort. And that's how I would go about using a hybrid template on a C8 door now, if you want to see how I make the cut, stay tuned and we'll see you on the next one.